welcome to another episode of Conversations with Alison J, The Journey to Hear. I'm Alison J. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the videos and share. Today, we'll be speaking with Max Skinner. Max is a community development manager on the fundraising team at Movember. Movember is an annual event involving the growing of moustaches during the month of November to raise awareness of men's health issues such as prostate cancer, testicular cancer, men's suicide and mental health. The word Movember is a combination of words moustache, mo and November. The goal of Movember is to change the face of men's health. Since 2003, the Movember Foundation charity has used Movember to raise awareness and funds for men's health issues in Australia and New Zealand, with the proceeds going towards Prostate Cancer Foundation and Cancer Society and Mental Health Foundations in New Zealand and Beyond Blue. In 2007, the foundation launched campaigns in Canada, Spain, the UK, the US, Ireland, the Czech Republic, Denmark, El Salvador, Israel, South Africa, and also in Taiwan. By encouraging men, whom the charity refers to as Mo's Bros, to get involved, Movember aims to increase early cancer detection, diagnosis and effective treatments, and ultimately reduce the number of preventable deaths. Besides annual checkups, the Movember Foundation encourages men to be aware of family history of cancer and also to adopt a healthier lifestyle. Using the moustache as the driving symbol of the movement, Movember focuses, again, as previously mentioned, on three key areas, being prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and mental health and suicide prevention. Since its inception, the Movember Foundation has raised over $800 million and funded over 1,200 projects in more than 20 countries. In 2012, the Global Journal listed Movember as one of the world's top 100 non-government organizations. Max, thank you so much for joining us here on Conversations with Alison J, The Journey to Hear. Um, Max, I'm just going to kick it over to you to really go into what the history of Movember is. Yeah, absolutely, Alison. First of all, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, always grateful to, to be able to have these opportunities to speak on men's health and, and mental health in general. Uh, so so Movember, for, for folks that might not know what we're all about, uh, we're a global uh, 501c3 nonprofit, uh, re really the leading charity for, for men's health. So we raise money for prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and men's mental health and suicide prevention. Uh, the organization's actually been around for 20 years. We're celebrating our 20-year anniversary this year, which is super exciting. Uh, started off in 2003 out of Melbourne, Australia, just a couple of guys uh, having a chat over a pint of beer at a local bar in Melbourne. And they were just talking about how to bring more awareness to men's health in general. And actually, one of their friends' mothers was going through a uh, breast cancer battle at the time. And they noticed, you know, how many resources and levels of support uh, the breast cancer awareness community was receiving. And they actually had a buddy, you know, simultaneously actually battling prostate cancer at the time. And they thought, you know, prostate cancer wasn't getting enough love and enough awareness. And men's health was kind of being swept under the rug a little bit. And so, you know, over a beer, uh, they wanted to, to, to bring a little more awareness to men's health in general. And they were both actually rocking mustaches at the time and thought that would be a great kind of icon or walking billboard, if you will. And so it started off in 2003, again, from two guys just having a, a chat over a beer. And it's grown into a global movement of over 6 million fundraisers. And we've raised over a billion dollars for men's health. Uh, programs and re cancer research over the last 20 years. So it's really come a long way, but it started off started off small as, as most of these movements do. Thank you, Max. And I really like the point that you raised there because that is something that I think we've noticed that there's so many areas of men's health that not just prostate cancer, but just men's mental health and other areas of men's health that just don't, to your point, get enough love. And it, does, it doesn't get enough exposure as some of the other illnesses. For example, every year you have in October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you have 
and all the world over, you have all of these 5K runs, walks and so on, raising funds and raising awareness for breast cancer. And also when we look at breast cancer, your mind will automatically go to women's health issues. And so therefore we don't really pay that much attention. I, I don't want to use that word attention, that we don't pay that much attention to men's health, men's just overall well-being, whether it be their mental health, um, physical health and so on. So thank you so much for, for raising that. And you touched on it was some friends, some buddies having uh, God had this amazing idea over a pint. And so really, if you can just give us some more details into what Movember does and what their like their main areas of focus are. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it started off, I, I mentioned, started off focused on prostate cancer because one of their buddies was was battling prostate cancer at the time. Um, and, uh, Movember at, you know, in its infancy, it, it partnered with the prostate cancer Institute in Australia and, and New Zealand. And so that was one of our first community health partners that we helped fund and support, uh, 20 years ago. And then it grew, you know, over time, we, we adapted to the times and, and recognized that testicular cancer, which is the number one, can uh, most common cancer among younger men, uh, was also, uh, kind of getting lost in the, lost in the sauce a little bit. And so we, we decided to, to focus on testicular cancer is one of our main, you know, key focus areas. Um, and so those are, our, you know, the first two causes that Movember was representing and, and helping to fund and support. Um, and then most recently, about five years ago in 2018, uh, we introduced mental health and suicide prevention as one of our key focus areas as well, just given uh, kind of the rapid rate, uh, suicide rate among amongst men, we're kind of seeing this mental health crisis uh, uh, amongst men, unfortunately, over the last five years even though, you know, therapy and resources are becoming more readily accessible for men, for whatever reason, the suicide rate continues to climb. In fact, three out of four suicides are made by men in the US. So clearly, there's uh, a lot of work to be done. It's a very sobering and staggering number, to say the least. But that's why organizations like Movember exist, right? We're, we're here uh, to help open up that dialogue, help men become more comfortable to be, uh, to be vulnerable, to share their feelings, and to have conversations like this. And so that's what Movember is all about at its core. Uh, the way our, our fundraising model works, Allison, is um, we, we raise traditionally about $60 million for men's health programs and, and cancer research uh, every year. 18 million of that is fundraised in the US. And then we have global markets in Australia, uh, in Ireland, in the UK, in Toronto, um, and then we have an office in New York and LA as well here in the States. Um, of the funds that we that we raise every year, and it's all through our community, we, we have an amazing community of peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising support. Um, so we really rely on our, our community to, to do the fundraising on our behalf, really. Um, of the funds that we raise, about 78% of that gets donated to our community health partners. So our programs team here does an incredible job of finding the right programs uh, cancer research programs um, or other suicide prevention institutes or other mental health programs uh, that we actually fund and support using the, the funds that we raise. The other 22% goes to, you know, administrative costs, salaries, uh, insurance, legal fees, all that good stuff so that I can uh, physically work here as well. Um, but that's kind of how our fundraising model works. And as I mentioned, we have a, a, a bunch of amazing community health partners that we that we fund and support. Thank you. And are you able to just share with us who some of those partners are? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of our biggest flagship partners in the U.S. Uh, on the prostate cancer side is this uh, program called True North. And it's basically a collective of, of researchers and, and scientists around the world that have come together uh, to develop, you know, uh, uh, prostate cancer research um, um, studies and, and, and all that good stuff. So True North is one of our flagship programs that we fund. Uh, one of the mental health programs that I really, really love is called Making Connections. And that's really focused on underserved, low-income communities around the U.S. who might not have access to some of these mental health resources. They might not have health insurance. We all know how expensive and crazy health insurance is. And so that program is really designed to help low-income, underserved families and communities 
uh, have, you know, have these mental health resources a little more readily accessible at their fingertips. Um, so making connections is a great uh, mental health program and true North is a great prostate cancer, uh, program as well. The, the way our, our model works is, um, we usually establish contracts and long-term partnerships with these community health partners for five years or five to 10 years at a time. Um, we actually are in the process after this big Movember campaign next month of reviewing all of our existing uh, programs and community health partners. So it could shift over the next couple of years, uh, but long story short, our programs team uh, does an amazing job of identifying programs and, and resources that really work and that resonate with men. Thank you um, for sharing that, Max. So that just so that people listening, if they don't get in touch with Movember directly, at least they know which other partners that they can reach out to for re help and resources. And one of the things that you mentioned, and I've done a couple of podcasts on this previously, is suicide in men. And I think for myself, when I first heard the statistic that more men actually take their life by suicide than women. We were, I, was, I was quite alarmed because you just didn't think that. But then as I thought about it over the years, I was like, actually, yes. Um, all the cases that I've heard of people that I've known personally, for example, it, I've known of, for example, one woman and five men. Yep. And we don't really give that the importance that it needs we, and I don't think we actually look into it to even make that connection so thank you so much for touching on that and giving the statistics and just also in raising awareness and letting men know that look yes you probably grew up here in the boys don't cry suck it up man up be a man but you know something not if it's going to cost you your mental health in your life right totally and and yeah, you, you nailed it, Allison. Like, uh, for whatever reason, men were kind of socially wired and predisposed to have this masculine guard up, right? Like, we're we're not comfortable opening it up. We shove our emotions down. We don't seek out help. We don't go to the doctor. We don't talk about our feelings. Uh, for whatever reason, we were kind of pre-wired to think that way, right? And um, one thing that Movember's, you know, preaching from the the mountaintops is to open up, have these conversations and let your emotions out because uh, you don't want that to, you know, bubble up and, and come out in a negative, uh, negative fashion at some point in your life down the line. Um, and it's easier said than done. And, you know, it's all about talking and opening up. We actually have a model over here called ALEC, A-L-E-C. It's ask, listen, encourage action and check in. A-L-E-C, the ALEC model. We always tell our community members to kind of go by that really encourage you all if, if you if you have a loved one or a friend that's going through a difficult time and it's it's easy to see uh, whether it's body language or if they're distant or not reaching out or not talking as frequently as they used to reach out to them ask questions ask how they're doing encourage action um, and listen at the end of the day you know we're all we're, we all like to talk but it, it really takes a lot to listen and to sit back and just to hear your friends and loved ones out um, so Alec, Alec is a great model that we live by that really encourage your, you know, your community to look at. Thank you. And can you, sorry, can you just repeat what um, the acronym Alec is? It's ask, listen, encourage action and check in. Thank you, Alec. I'm, I must remember that. Thank you for sharing that, Max. And it is so, it really is so important because to your point, it's just the shouting it from the rooftops because above everything else, it's actually unhealthy to keep everything bottled up inside anyway, and which we don't, we don't, again, that's something we don't pay attention to. It is actually not healthy, because if you think about anything that gets bottled up, eventually it will explode, right? And if we look at a, a volcano, eventually it, it, a, a volcano will erupt, and it's never a good thing. When an eruption happens, it's never a good thing thing so please just pay like we just let us all pay attention to the men in our lives right and just to your point and unfortunately there are some times that we don't know that somebody's struggling with something there's sometimes we 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 it's sometimes it's in hindsight that we think oh my gosh yes there were signs there but for the most for, for the most part I know 
that there have been, you, you hear it commonly said, I had no idea they were struggling. I, and- I, I didn't know they, they could have spoken to me. And I think sometimes, like for myself, because I can't speak on in, in the place of a man, but I know sometimes for myself, if I look at it and I think about it, it's like, actually, if I'm going through something, the easiest thing for me to do is not to reach out to someone else, right? Correct. And, and I've seen both both ends of the spectrum when it comes to the warning signs. Unfortunately, I've, I've actually been touched by suicide throughout my life. Um, lost my mother 10 years ago to suicide, which... Sorry. Thanks, Allison. Yeah, ne- needless to say... You know, for any twenty-one-year-old kid straight out of co- uh, straight out of college, it you know totally flipped my world upside down. And as an only child, I was kind of left to pick up the pieces. But at the time, I knew that she was struggling, and I was at home taking care of her because she was battling you know severe depression and anxiety. And um, the warning signs were were everywhere. And I was young, and this was ten years ago. And uh, you know, this conversation wasn't as open as it is now, thankfully. Um, and then fast forward five years later, I actually lost a fraternity brother to suicide as well. And uh, it was completely opposite. No one had any idea it would happen. He seemed like a happy-go-lucky guy every time we saw him when I li- was living in Boston at the time. And it turns out, you know, he, he came from a very, very Catholic uh, Catholic background. And they're very, fairly, you know, fairly hush-hush about mental health and suicide. Um, and so it was just interesting for me to kind of see both ends of the spectrum when it comes to warning signs. Um, So with all that being said, I mean, I think everyone, hopefully not everyone, but a lot of people are touched uh, by suicide, especially recently. And for whatever reason, you know, it's interesting, actually, more men, uh, I saw, I read a report the other day that more men are going to therapy now more than ever before. But for whatever reason, the suicide rate among men continues to climb, like almost in correlation with that therapy line. So for, for for whatever reason, maybe traditional therapy isn't as effective for men as it used to be, or um, who knows, but there's a lot, a lot of work to be done, clearly. Yes, and something that you mentioned about keeping things hush-hush, and I can speak on, um, on a cultural aspect as well, and I know, for example, so even though I was born and raised in London, um, my family are from the Caribbean, they're from Jamaica, and so you, I know culturally, it's not the done thing for, forget men speaking about their problems, it's not even the done thing for women to speak about their problems and things, you just don't speak about your problems, you don't, you don't share, you don't go to therapy, you, you just, there's all these don'ts around, uh, around this, and again, so, because uh, I even recall that, um, and a uh, hearing growing up hearing about people that have mental illnesses and the way that it was brushed under the carpet and it wasn't discussed and it wasn't spoken about so it actually um fed into the stigma surrounding uh, getting therapy mental health and things like that and so therefore again people had no outlet and to hear that the numbers are not they're not going in the right direction, Max, are they? Even though the access to therapy is there, I still think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I still think because of the stigma that is so attached to mental health and getting help and therapy, that, again, correct me if I'm wrong, does that, do you not think that has something to do with it as well? No, it, it absolutely does. Um, I, I'd like to think that narrative has shifted a bit especially in the last you know recent years since the the you know whole social isolation piece of covid mm-hmm. i think men were forced to get a little more in tune and in touch with themselves and their emotions during that time period um but it, no the stigma is absolutely still prevalent um and i think it's at the root of why more men don't seek seek help um i also think uh, kind of the healthcare system in the us is set up to to fail men and women for that for that matter when it comes to finding therapy if if you don't have you know the right healthcare package or benefits at work it's difficult to find a convenient therapist on your own time for a, for a, a cost effective rate i mean luckily i i work at movember and obviously mental health is one of our pillars um and so we have great access to mental health resources and therapists through our our uh you know benefits package here but a lot of people don't have that luxury and so I think ultimately uh, our health our healthcare system doesn't do us any favors. 
and therapy is expensive and it's not convenient and um you know it's tough to find the right therapist for you so i think it's a, a kind of a snowball effect of a lot of different factors but to answer your question 100 percent, the stigma is still still prevalent you just reminded me of something so i recall during the pandemic so so interestingly enough so four days before covid i moved from florida to maryland to start a new role same company just a new role and um that was March of 2020, four days into the role. We were told, everybody go home for two weeks. Um, this thing is happening in the world, COVID, go home for a couple of weeks. Fast forward 18 months, <laughs> we're still working from home. Now, I've moved to an area where I didn't know anyone, I didn't know anywhere, so just completely isolated. And I was struggling a lot of it, you know, full transparency. Yeah. And so I, I went to a doctor, got signed up with a new doctor in the area. And they gave me a list. In fact, so to your point about um, we're not set up for success when it comes to getting help for mental health. So it was three pages long, a list of three pages of therapists for me to choose from. So I'm thinking, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. So let me get this straight. I'm struggling. And you have given me a list that is three pages long, and I now have to work my way through this list. Oh, oh, oh okay, yeah. that's gonna help me. That's so gonna help me. So, took that deep breath and I thought, okay, okay. And I recall <laughs> calling a couple, and the response was, oh, we're not taking any new patients. I put the list down. To be honest, I don't even know if I knew, would know where to find it now. But to your point of not being set up for success. In my head, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, who does that? It's like, who does that? And how is that helpful? I, I For them, I think it's just lip service at that point, just to check off a box. And um, uh, it, it's funny, even through, you know, even through our healthcare package here, um, we're through Blue Cross Blue Shield in California. And, um, you know, there's a portal, like a mental health resource portal on their website where they give you a list, same thing. They give you a list of hundreds or thousands of therapists in your area um, with no sort of like review system or it's just, it's, first of all, it's very overwhelming on paper. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, you're, you're cold. It's a lot of cold outreach. Luckily, I will say that there are like apps like better health and some other, some other websites and, and platforms like that, that I think try to help lower the barrier to entry and, and connect you with the right therapist based off of your, your personality. But those costs, money as well there's subscription fees so it, for whatever reason the barrier to entry for for mental health resources and traditional therapy is is high um but I, I will say and I'm happy to touch on this there are other forms of therapy and, and meditative practices that exist that um, at least personally I've found that do wonders and and you know kind of take the place of traditional therapy and I'm, I'm happy to speak to those if if you want to get into it yes absolutely. Cool. So, I mean, you know, I, I've found, especially since my mother passed, um, yeah, obviously dealt with, you know, a lot of anxiety after that happened. And the, the first few years were tough, man. Like I, I turned to drugs and alcohol as my escape and built up a lot of negative habitual patterns in my life. And then woke up one day and, you know, realized like, I didn't want to turn out like my mom did. Right. And that was ultimately the fire that, uh, that was lit underneath me to to change and to do something with purpose and meaning in my life. Um, and I actually, you know, let's see, rewind seven years, I, I found a, a therapist and I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time. And uh, she was all about mindfulness and, you know, breathing methods. And there's one breathing method called the four by four breathing that honestly really grounds me whenever I'm feeling anxious or stressed. And I kind of dig my feet into the ground and, and get grounded that way. Um, so I, you know, highly encourage folks to check out breathing me uh, methods and different meditative practices. The Headspace app is fantastic. Again, there's a little bit of a, a subscription fee, but I, I promise it's worth it. Um, there's, you know, bedtime uh, meditative practices, guided meditations, all that good stuff. So for me, meditation has been huge. Um, working out, running is, is my form of therapy as well. I, have the luxury of living in Southern California. So I can pop down to the beach and, and run, you know, run on the sidewalk right by the beach, which for me, the water is therapeutic in a way as well. Um, so, you know, exercise is key here at Movember. We have a, a whole challenge called move for Movember, 
where we encourage our community members and fundraisers to get active, to exercise, because obviously there's a direct correlation between your physical health and your mental health. A ton of science behind that. And actually the, the Move for Movember initiative is really cool. We encourage our, our community to commit to running or walking 60 miles or kilometers during the month of November for the 60 men that we lose to suicide every hour around the world. Um, so listen, we, we lose a man to suicide every minute. We've been on this call, Allison, for nearly 30 minutes. So while we've been talking, 30 men have taken their own life in the, in the very span of this call. Um, wow. Again, very, very alarming, but just to put it into perspective of why we need to be having these conversations and why need to be, why people need to get active and, and find you know different forms of therapy that suit them the best. Absolutely. And every time I hear the statistic, it's just staggering to me that it is just so it's just so, so alarmingly staggering. So thank you for touching on that. And also for sharing that there are other forms of things that you can do, because to your point, not everybody's going to be able to afford Forward therapy because it is not um it's not affordable for many people but there are things you can do like you mentioned you mentioned the breathing you mentioned exercise that you may not be able to afford to go to a gym but guess what walking is free running is free you can go on to youtube and there are exercise videos and things like that that you can do if you're a person of faith you can reach out to somebody in your church you can pray you can meditate you can sing one of the things that i encourage people to do and i said it's um it's impossible for you to really be in a bad mood if you're singing and dancing right mm -hmm. So I said, yeah. look, I take it one step further. Like, you're going to feel silly when you do this, but strip off, get butt naked and dance around the house. Sing and dance around the house. And you'll be surprised at how you will just end up laughing at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I think there's been like a bunch of reports that if you force yourself to smile, it releases endorphins. And I, I think it's probably the same thing for singing and dancing. So I, I love that, Allison. That's, I'll, I'll have to... I'll have to try that out. Maybe when my wife's not around so she doesn't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's just one of those things where it just if you're if you're feeling so like tense and anxious and things like that, that's just a quick way to just help help shift your mindset, shift your mood and hopefully get you out of if you're in a rut at that moment in time and get you out of it. And so yeah. And, Matt, and I just want to personally also just thank you for just being so open and sharing with us about your mother. And was that the personal motivation for you as to why you got involved in this work? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it, it's it's amazing how life kind of comes full circle and how, you know, horrible experiences or trauma um can can build purpose within your life and light a fire under your ass like for me obviously that was an incredibly traumatizing experience and it's it's weird to say but it, it's led me to this point and it's made me a stronger person um and all you can really do when when life hands you bad cards is to turn those negative experiences into something positive right i could have sat in my pity pot at party and felt bad for myself but um i wanted to take that experience and build something with purpose and help other you know, families and people get through the experience that I went through. Um, so that was really at the root of why I got involved in the nonprofit space. I actually started my career in sports marketing, uh, living in Boston at the time, working for the Red Sox and, and DraftKings, and then kind of woke up one day, call it a quarter life existential crisis, whatever you want to call it. But it just didn't feel like what I was supposed to be doing in my life. And um, I again, I wanted to work on something purpose driven, something more meaningful and rewarding at the end of the day. And so got involved in in nonprofit work in Boston and then moved out to L.A. a couple of years ago. And this job at November opened up and felt like serendipity. And now I'm here. And to your point about it, it may sound strange, but taking this route and going in a different direction because you wanted your life to be different and my mother has a saying and it's not until I would say the beginning of this month that I actually got the full meaning of what that meant and she says every disappointment is an appointment mm. 
And she would normally say that when I'm like frustrated because something didn't go my way. So just like, seriously, mum, like, for, like, really, really? Because so, I actually just didn't want to hear it at the time. Like, sorry, mum. I, I, if you watch any of my podcasts, you'll realise there's a lot of times I'm like, sorry, mum, because there's something that she says that's like, OK, I get it now. But um, she, um, yeah, she would say that. And I'd just be like, OK, OK. And I realised just more and more recently that, Maybe if it wasn't for your mother taking her life, you would not have been on this path to really, like you said, you wanted to do something purposeful and really just feel full in a purpose in your life. So I think if the more we look at that, every disappointment is an appointment. I, I love that. And um, you're absolutely right. I mean, I mean who knows why, why we're put on this earth? Mm-hmm. Um, we actually had one of our top fundraisers. He he came into the office yesterday. He flew in from Florida um, all the way out here to LA because he had a big media blitz this morning on our behalf. And he's a prostate cancer survivor. He had prostate cancer 15 years ago, which is why he started fundraising for Movember. And he, he told us, he said, point blank, I believe I was put on this earth to get prostate cancer so that I could help other people that are experiencing this disease. And it was really powerful to hear it from someone who's a survivor, obviously, and it just put everything into perspective. And I, I, I maybe it's the kind of yogi Buddhist in me, but I like to believe that we're put on this earth for for a reason. No, oh, absolutely, and and I do agree with you on that. I do believe that every everybody ha- is here for a reason and a purpose. And just many times, it's just for us to find and know what that purpose is. And I think that's why sometimes we are a little bit lost because we haven't maybe discovered what our purpose is. So I, I firmly believe God put us all here for a reason. We all have a purpose and we all have a role and a part to play. And I think, because if not, I don't think we would be here candidly, you know? So, True. and I agree with that. So um, to what you mentioned about the gentleman that came out from Florida for the media blitz. And so I am... Um, I did a podcast a couple of years ago now with a gentleman from Prostate Cancer UK. Mm. He too is a prostate cancer survivor and he's an advocate for them. And um, he was just giving me some just alarming statistics about prostate cancer and men that suffer from it, especially um, in the black community, because black men are diagnosed at a younger age. Yep. than other ethnicities as well. And he was sharing that. And and also something that I was reading recently, what you, you had mentioned about suicide, I was reading recently that also teen suicide, the numbers are, are there are increasing also, which again, so it's not just thinking about we need to pay attention to adult men, adult women. We also need to keep an eye on our children. No, as no, well. doubt. no, no doubt. And I think... I could be wrong about this, but I believe uh, there's going to be a huge report released in 2024, a a more recent report about suicide rates and and mental health and all that. Um, But to your point, Allison, yeah, the the suicide rate amongst younger people and teens is rapidly increasing. And I, I personally think it's a direct correlation to social media and kind of the pressures, the innate pressures that teens are experiencing there through TikTok or um, just having unrealistic unrealistic expectations of themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you're absolutely right. When it comes to African American men, they are more genetically predisposed to prostate cancer. So it's really important to understand your family history, especially when it comes to prostate cancer and mental health, which is why, you know, men need to be more proactive and talk to their doctors to figure out exactly when they're more genetically predisposed, at what age. So that they can, you know, they can get tested, they can get a PSMA test uh, at an early age and, and find out when the right time is. So it's it's important to know these metrics, not to alarm people, but to kind of create a sense of urgency so that people are a little more proactive about their health. Yeah, exactly. And to your point, it's not to we're not trying to be alarmists here. What we're right. trying to do is um, bring education, bring awareness because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And until recently, me doing my own research, I had no idea that if you're a man and there's a history of breast cancer in your family, you are also at a higher risk of getting prostate cancer as well. So again, attention paid and focused on women's health issues and breast cancer, 
But then again, it was, why did I have to go dig in to do research? Because I wanted to speak to somebody to know that if you have breast cancer in your family, there's also a chance that, look, prostate cancer can run in your family and get it looked into, right? Wow. Yeah, I, I didn't know that personally. Um, that's super fascinating. And uh, again, the reason why you need to understand your family history so you can get ahead of this stuff. And um, you, you mentioned, you know, women, obviously, Movember holistically is about men's health, right? Um, but we do have an amazing community. We call them our most sisters. And if you think about it, you know, everyone has a father, everyone um, has a friend, a brother, spouse, a partner who, who might be a male, right? And um, our, our the women in our community are also affected by these diseases because obviously if, if their partner or loved one has one of these diseases, there's almost a trickle-down effect and mental health is kind of the overarching umbrella in that sense. Um, and so I, I do want to mention that, uh, you know, we'd love to activate more women in our community and we already have an amazing base, but um, these these causes really affect the entire family. So it's not just men that we're talking about here. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you touched on that, because to your point, we all, we all know a man, <laughs> right? And so whether somebody you work with, whether it's someone you are related to, it's just worthwhile paying that extra bit of attention. And so you mentioned most sisters, but how else can women get involved? Yeah, I mean, so obviously we're known for our mustache, right? And um, that's, again, that's our walking billboard. Like we want people to think of the mustache like they, they do the, the pink ribbon for breast cancer awareness. Um, but we also know that women necessarily can't grow mustaches. And so luckily there are other ways that, that women can support Movember and our cause. Um, I mentioned the move for Movember challenge. So that's a, a really cool kind of um, physical challenge where you're committing to, you know, running or walking 60 miles next month. And through the, the Movember platform, you can actually keep track of all those miles and log them directly on your Mo page. We have, um, you can connect with your fitness band, your Strava account, so that it automatically syncs up when you go to go on a run. Um, so that's one, you know, one support level that folks can get involved with. Um, we have an uh, initiative called Mow Your Own Way, which is kind of carte blanche and, and gives folks um, carte blanche to, to raise awareness or raise funds however they see fit. So, for example, uh, we actually had a guy last year. Um, he's a professional skydiver, and he decided he wanted to break the Guinness World uh, Guinness Book of World Records for most skydiving, excuse me, most naked skydives in one day. And believe it or not, this guy went out, did 64 naked skydives in the span of 24 hours with nothing but a mustache and his parachute. And he was raising awareness for Movember. And so <laughs> that example is, it's funny, but it's like, uh, it, it's a great snapshot into the unique ways our community can get involved beyond just, you know, fundraising or growing out a mustache. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, try as I might, it's not working for me. <laughs> so thank you for letting me know that there are other ways. I have bought a couple of stick on ones so that um, and I'm going to be taking pictures through that. Hopefully I'll be raising some money myself for November. But um, thank you. So and, and also thank you, Max, for the image of the naked sky. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> for that. But... <laughs> Um, no, it, it's funny, man. Our, our community gets so creative and unique with the ways they raise awareness for us. Like folks will, they'll create like Movember scented candles and auction those off, or they'll, you know, sew a Movember themed quilt and auction that off. And, um, it, it, it's just really cool to see, uh, how engaged and, and creative our community gets. And the, the last piece that I'll mention is you can host an event, you know, pretty straightforward. We have we have people that do, that do happy hours or virtual trivia events or um, anything in between, you know, at your local sports league or softball team or whatever it is. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can get involved. And for, for folks that might not be able to grow out, uh, you know, a beautiful, lushy mustache, we always say that, you know, the, the worst mustaches make the best conversations. And there's there's no mustache too insignificant or no conversation too insignificant to have. Um, so needless to say, like, rest assured, if you can't grow out a good mustache, 
uh, it's a good conversation starter. And, and you'd be amazed at how many people you can impact along the way. Absolutely, because I recall prior to moving to the U.S., having several conversations because I first heard of Movember when I was living, when I before I moved to the U.S. while I was still in London. Mm. And, oh, there were some interesting, I, I'm, I'm going to use the word interesting. <laughs> it's a good way to put it. <laughs> interesting um, moustaches that led to some very interesting conversations. And that's how I first knew and heard of Movember because I saw a very interesting moustache on a gentleman and that's how I learned about that there's actually different names for them the handlebars and all kinds of things so (laughs) so yes it's um there are some really creative ways that people have gotten involved raised funds and also more importantly as well raising awareness so that there's other people, other men can they can go and they can get themselves checked and they they can seek someone to talk to if they're suffering and they have um, suicidal ideations and things like that. There's um, and one thing we didn't touch on because we mentioned prostate cancer, but we didn't also touch on because you mentioned um, about testicular cancer as well. Yeah. So as I mentioned, it's the most common cancer among younger men. Um you know, age 18 to 35. Luckily, it's a a very preventable disease. um, As long as you catch it early enough. And one one little saying we have here at Movember is know thy nuts, which is a a cheeky way of saying, you know, your own body, if something feels (laughs) off, just go go to your doctor and and ask them what's going on. I actually had a, a bit of a scare last year, believe it or not, I was, um, you know, in the shower, uh, doing doing my normal tr- uh, normal routine and uh, something felt a little off. I felt a lump and went to the doctor. It was you know kind of stomach drops when you when you first feel that because something feels off. And I had just started working in November, so everything was kind of in the back of my mind. Luckily, it turned out to just be like a benign cyst. Um, but uh, I had the peace of mind after you know getting uh, uh, an ultrasound and, and getting checked out by a doctor. But it's one of those things where it's it sounds simple and easier said than done. But if something feels off, just just go talk to your doctor, and chances are you'll get ahead of it enough where it'll be fine. But um, yeah, it's uh, testicular cancer is no joke. I know a lot of people that have been affected by that in their in their younger age. And it's so again, it's not something that we think of because we think when we think of young people, we just think of invincible, don't we? So for you to mention that testicular cancer, but you said eight between the ages of 18 to 35. So the, the most cancer or most common cancer uh, among that demographic. Yeah. Wow. That's 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 wow. That's interesting because who would have thought that so thank you so much for mentioning that and one of the things that there's a word that you use that i really like preventable yep it's um, caught early enough it's testicular cancer prostate cancer caught early enough it is actually preventable yeah and uh, specific I mean, in particular testicular cancer is is probably more preventable than the other diseases but even prostate cancer has come a long way even in the last 20 years since movember has existed the the resources and preventative measures and medicine and procedures has has grown exponentially to the point where um again if you catch it early enough which means if you get screened early enough and know your family history then you should be fine um, so it's a very, very preventable disease, luckily. And then uh, suicide and mental health, I'd like to think it falls under that category. It's, it, it sneaks up on a lot of folks and is, you know, kind of underlying for, uh, you know, for a while. But I, I think if you're proactive with your mental health, even if you don't feel sad or, or depressed or anxious, it's good to talk to an unbiased source or talk to someone or, again, work out or try meditation before any sort of problem can exist in snowball. So I think they all fall under the same umbrella in terms of being preventable diseases, uh, obviously different kind of different tiers, but y- you get what I'm saying. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's interesting because to uh, another expression I grew up um, hearing is, so in Jamaica, they have an expression that says prevention is better than cure. Mm. And so to your point of you don't have to wait until you're feeling sad or anxious 
and those days when you're just feeling emotional and don't want to get up, don't want to get out of bed. You don't have to wait until it gets there. You can actually, um, while you're in a good mood, start talking now. So yeah. that should, God forbid, that, um, that happen to you, you're already you already have that support network, so to speak, around you that you can go to. So you don't have to wait until you're feeling down or depressed and sad. And not only that, what if you're if you're already in that space where when you're feeling fine, you 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 find someone trusted to speak to to confide in. So God forbid, should you ever get to that stage when you're not feeling okay, that person knows you well enough to say, and then we can go back and use that Alec model that you mentioned, right? Because that person knows you well enough to now say, hold on a second, you're seeming a little off. Because like prime example, um, this young lady that I know, I called her once and she's like, how are you? Said, how are you? I'm like, yeah, that was way too high pitched. What's up? <laughs> And she's like, no, no, you're fine. I'm like, no, 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 that's way too high pitched. What's up? And she's like, well, you know, and then she proceeded to tell me that there was something going on. But it's, but it's because we'd already built that relationship. We'd already started talking. So I knew that I could hear in her voice, okay, something's not, something's a little not right there. And I think that to your point, the same thing with men and women, don't wait until you're depressed and anxious. Get that trusted person, your person, that you can speak to so that if they don't hear from you for a few days, they can like, hold on a second. I haven't heard from Max what's going on. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, it, it really helps building that support system and a confidant, but you can even find like a trusted activity. Like, like I mentioned earlier, if you're feeling anxious or if I'm feeling anxious, I go for a run and kind of sweat out the demons and sweat out the anxiety. And for me, that's my form of therapy or playing with my dog and because a lot of the time when people are depressed and in that mental rut, it's it's tough to dig yourself out of that. And it's tough to find the energy to even speak to someone, even if they're in the same room as you. And so if you're in those moments uh, and you don't feel like speaking to someone or opening up, try to find an activity or something that gets you out of the house, gets you gets you out of your own head. I think that's super important as well. So to your point you know, it, it's good to be proactive and kind of build that framework so that when shit hits the fan, you're well equipped and you're and you know where to turn, in other words. Yeah. So not only do you know where to turn, but again, there's that person's tapped into you and they know you well enough to be able to to seek you out. Because I know like prime example for myself, it's like, yeah, I'm that person. I'll go in, shut all the doors, don't speak to anybody. And I could just be inside for days. <laughs> Same. Yeah. And I do have a friend, um, I'm going to throw her name out there, Barbara. She is that one that was just like, Al, what's going on? Al, I can't hear from you, Al. And then eventually it's just like, Barbara, I'm fine. OK, and then we'll have that conversation and then we'll talk through it. And then, you know, we're good. So every, everybody needs a Barbara. <laughs> everybody needs a Barbara. Everybody needs a Barbara. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah. So great. And so, Max, thank you for all that you've shared and give us sharing us and I think it's important that you've shared some of the, the 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 statistics with us as well as the just not just the numbers because I know sometimes we look at the numbers and it's like oh my gosh one in three and all those and that can be scary but also sharing with us like okay if you're at this age you could be susceptible I mean it's not the be all and end all and it's it's not like the gospel because there, there are anomalies and things happen outside of these age ranges but also but just be aware be careful and i'm gonna start using things like alec and know your nuts and it's like <laughs> <laughs> i better be careful how, who i use that one on but but there are just, you know, there's like to your point it doesn't have to be all you have to be all doom and gloom and on somebody you could just say something in just a a bit of a tongue-in-cheek way to raise awareness to let people know of what's going on and to just be in because some of it is also being in tune with yourself yeah, exactly. And we know, again, we know our own bodies, we know our own mental health, you can feel if there's a mental rut coming on, you can you can feel it coming on. And so again, it's all about establishing that framework, that support system. Um, and to your point, like, by knowing these metrics and statistics, it's not supposed to be doomsday, uh, doomsday, you know, we just want people to be aware and proactive, 
um, about their health and uh, know your, you know, again, know your family history, know when you're gen genetically predisposed to certain diseases um, and just be proactive about your health. That's ultimately all, all we're trying to do here. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Max. And what is next for Movember? So I know we've got the big Movember coming up in a few days now. So what are some of the projects and activities that we can look out for and expect? Yeah, so uh, the November 20, 2023 campaign is a week away, officially next Wednesday, uh, November 1st. And we encourage folks to come check out our website, us.movember.com, sign up, register, create an account on our, on our platform. And you don't necessarily have to fundraise for us, but if you feel financially inclined, we appreciate the support. As I mentioned, all the money is going to wonderful places and community health partners. We're very transparent about where those funds go. So even if you just want to receive, you know, communications about our causes or where that money's going, go onto our website, movember.com, sign up, create an account and encourage you to, to engage that way. Um, but yeah, that's uh, our big campaign is, is next month. Um, really encourage folks to, to get out in their community, start talking about these causes, be proactive about their own health, raise awareness for men's health and just have open dialogue and conversations with your loved ones and friends. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to do here. And so there's a bunch of different ways to get involved that I highlighted earlier, but ultimately we just want you to, to open up and, and have conversations and be proactive with your health. And a young man that I work with, he is going to be taking part in the marathon in New York for November as well. So oh, no nice. yeah, yeah. So and I actually didn't know about it until I was, I was thinking, I was having a conversation in the office. I'm thinking, what can we do for men's health? Because um, that was that's how the conversation even started in the office. I was thinking, and I remembered, I'm like, oh my gosh, Movember, yes. And so I was just asking, do you guys here know about Movember? And some said no. And one young man says, actually, yes, I do. And he pointed yeah. at his, I was like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> I actually happen to be running in the marathon for it. So no we do have, yes, we have someone in our office who's going to be running in the Movember uh, Marathon in New York. We're really excited for him. He's training, getting it all in. So it's it's going to be good. And we're going to hopefully have some pictures and things to show and share of him taking part in the marathon. So yes. thank you for sharing with us some other ways that people can get involved, Max. And you had mentioned the website, which I'm also going to include in the description, but no matter where in the world you are, because I know here in the US, you've got us.movember.com, but no matter where in the world you are, you can just Google movember.com, just to Google the Movember, is that correct, Max? Yeah, that's correct. It's it's Movember.com wherever you are in the world, but it'll just auto-populate uh, depending on what country you're in and depending on the language in that country, it'll auto-populate that market's uh, domain or whatever you want to call it. But just Movember.com and yeah, it'll pop up. Great stuff. And Max, again, I just want to thank you so much for sharing with us today on Conversations with Alice and Jay, The Journey to Hear. Thank you for sharing your own journey, your own story, and, and what Movember does in ways that we can get involved. We truly, truly appreciate your time and just want to say thank you. Thank you, Allison. Really, truly an honor and, and grateful for the opportunity to speak about men's health uh, on behalf of Movember. We appreciate having folks like you in our corner to help get the word out. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great stuff. Thanks, Max. Thank you, Allison. It was wonderful to, to meet you. And this was such a great conversation. Um, let me know if you need any like imagery or logos, or I can send you some like mental health resource links if you want to include that as well. Absolutely. That would be great. And then I can just include all of the links. So for all listening, the links will be in the description. You can also find the links on my website, find them on Movember, Google it, we're just making it easy for you to get all the resources that you absolutely need. Awesome. Great to meet you, Allison. Thanks again. Thanks, Max. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Thanks. Bye.